Welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. We've got a good video for you today about input and jump forgiveness, how to accomplish this in Pixel Game Maker MV. And we'll also be getting into comboing attacks using input forgiveness and then implementing jump forgiveness, but you might also know it as coyote time, where you can walk off a ledge a little bit for a, a split second and still be able to jump. It makes for a much better player experience and it is, it's important for all games really. So let's get started. So here's the simple player object I'll be using for the video. I've got a few states going on. They all require some form of input, except for waiting, that's just the default state. And before I get into uh, input forgiveness, which is where we'll start, I want to go over the types of inputs we have. And so going from waiting to attack, You'll see that one of the requirements is that X is pressed. And if I was to double click into here, we'll see that down here at the trigger type, there are two forms of pressing inputs that we can choose from. The first one is, and the default one is pressed. And what pressed is saying is that as long as you're holding down the input, it's going to register it as being pressed and that condition will be met. So let's just see that in action. If we were to hit play and I was to hold down X, I will keep attacking. I never have to press the input ever again, really. I just hold it down. And this generally isn't the preferred method. You generally want the player to be able to uh, interact more and have to press the button to do it. So when you do that, you will use this option called on press. And what this is saying is that it will only recognize it when it's pressed in the state that it is currently in. Now, where this can run into some problems, I'll click OK here and get this in, is that say we did not have a link from walk to attack and you could only attack from waiting. When you're walking around and then you stop, it goes to waiting. Well, if you try to preempt of an attack and you let go of the input as you're pressing attack at the same time, because you might not be in the waiting state, it might not recognize this on press. And let's just see this in action. If you are walking and you stop and press X, the player might think that he could have attacked, but it didn't register. And that's because we didn't give any input forgiveness. So if we go back into this pressed option here, we'll see that right below trigger type is acceptable frames. Now this is the input forgiveness that we're offering the player. This is where you can choose the frames. And remember frames, uh, 60 frames equals one second. So we can give them a leeway of when the last time X was pressed. So if we were to give it a w acceptable frame of 15, let's say, and we tried the same maneuver where we are walking, we stop and want to attack real quick, I can now do it because it recognizes within 15 frames in the past if I pressed X and it accomplishes it. So that is what input forgiveness is gen uh, essentially, is that it is this acceptable frames. Now we can also see this on the jump side of input. We can go to this and we can see that right now it's currently pressed. So right now you're just holding A and it's being pressed. Well, let's change that and we want it to be where it's on press and we'll hit OK. I'm also going to delete the walking one for now too, just to simplify this. And I'm giving it no acceptable frames. One thing I want to point out too is that you'll notice that press has no option for acceptable frames and that's because it's checking for it every check or every update. So only on press has the acceptable frame option. So we'll hit okay, hit play test here. And so this is the issue why you need to add input forgiveness to your jumping. Because when you jump, the, the player might think they're actually on the ground again, when really it was a split second, a one frame difference where the uh, tile wall detection was not on the tile wall or on the player wall detection. And so it can lead for some clunky filling jump. So let's change that and let's give it a 15, again, 15 frames. It seems about anywhere from 10 to 20 frames is, is generally the, the uh, nice input forgiveness. There may be some things though you need to go a little higher 
or you want a little lower. So you'll have to play around with the frame weights. So I added a 15 frame weight to jump and now I can jump and I can press it right before I jump and I can still jump, which is a nice feel, especially when you're trying to um, have like quick events where you gotta jump really quick and stuff. We can exaggerate this just to really prove this point and I can change the on press to 60, let's just say. So I have one second of in the past I could have pressed A and it will accept it. And if I hit OK and play test this, I'm going to hit A when I'm at the peak of my jump. So I hit A and as soon as it landed it jumped again because I gave it a second leeway of A bring, being on pressed. So I'm going to change this back to 15. I think 15 feels good. And I'm also going to copy this and put this back onto walk because you're going to definitely want this uh, from walking as well. And I'm also going to copy the attack one and put it back onto walk as well. All right, and that is input forgiveness basics. So now let's get into some uses for this and we'll start first with attack combos. So the best way that I've found personally to do this is that we want a state to be the, the check of whether you're continuing the combo or not after the attack. So you don't want it to go back to waiting. So we can delete this. And I'm going to copy this attack state. I'm gonna take it over here and I'm gonna say basically uh, continue combo with a question mark. And this is just for video sake of simplicity of reading. You're gonna name it whatever you want. And the link from attack to continue combo is going to be if motion plays to the end. You want the attack to play to the end first, right? So then the next thing you're gonna to need to do is on this continue combo, you want it to take over the motion of attack because you don't want it to run the check until the motion of the first attack is done. So then from here, I'm gonna copy paste this attack again. I'm gonna bring it over here and this is gonna be attack two. So this one could actually be attack one now. And this would be your attack two. And what you're gonna do is you're going to add a link to attack two. And you're gonna say that if X is pressed again. And you wanna give it acceptable frames again because sometimes in combos you're pressing, the, the player will be pressing buttons not necessarily in the time frame that the engine wants it. The engine's gonna want it perfectly to match when you're in that state, but we're wanting to give a little bit of, again, input forgiveness to the player. So I'm gonna put 15 on here again. And so then if they go to attack two, I'm going to have them, uh, the player shoot. Now, the other way it can go is that if you don't press the input, and how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to say that if literally 0 0.01 of a second goes by and there was no input pressed 15 frames ago, if that makes any sense, then we're gonna go back to waiting. And then the simple thing here is that if we do attack, we're now going to go back to waiting once the motion is done. Now you could continue this chain to go to as many form of combos that you need. I tried to do it based off of just this attack frame going into attack two. I couldn't find a good solution. If, if you guys did, please link in the comments below. I'll read it and probably do another video on it if it works good. But this one worked good and it, it felt decent. So if I move this up here and I click this uh, F6 play, this is where you can see the objects in action. And I move this over here so that we can see the input actually working. You'll see that you can, what I mean by you can see the object in action, you can see what state it's in. You can see it flashing walk between walk and idle. So now if I was to press X just one time, you'll see it went to attack, it went to continue combo where it checked, and then it went back to waiting. Now one thing that I already know that I forgot, and so I will actually not test it anymore, is that I forgot to give it priority. I need to give the one that goes to attack two, I need to give it the first priority of the check. You can do that by adding 
a higher number in the processing order. The higher number is ran first. And then this one is zero and this ran first. It defaults the first link you create from that state will be the first one ran. So this one was actually the first one going to be checked. I believe that's the first one I created. So now that I have manually said this one the first, now we can play test it and get a better result. Okay, so you can see that I attack and you can see the logic flowing right there. Now if I press X again, the player does the shoot. Now watch how hard this would be if I gave it no input forgiveness. This is, this is where it just really shines. So I'm pressing X and I'm, I'm pressing it relatively like I would a normal game and it's not happening. Now I'm spamming it like I would a, a Super Mario Party game. And there we go, I finally got it. That is exactly <laughs> why we need to add input forgiveness. Okay, so I'm gonna add the 15 frames back and that's it. That's it for setting up a basic combo now. And so now we can jump over here and we can start talking about jump forgiveness or as you might have heard it, coyote time. So the first thing is is that a jump state is not going to allow us to do what we want to do for a jump forgiveness. And I would say most of your games have a false state associated with a jump. And so first off, you do need to add a false state. So I'm going to select the jump, copy paste it, and I'm going to call this one fall. I'm going to say takes over motion because I want it to take over the same motion. I don't have a fall motion in this in these uh, default assets here. I do want to take off the jump though. I don't want it to jump again. And so I'm going to add a link to fall and it's going to be if on page two, if the jump peak has been reached. And so when the player jumps, when it reaches its high, that's when it's going to go into fall. And it'll be in this state while it's falling. Now the other thing is, is that we don't need to link jump back to waiting anymore. We actually want to link fall back to waiting. But we do want to use the same check. So I'm just going to take this one and move it over to fall instead of jump. Alright, so we have set up our fall state and everything should be good there. Now we can add the jump forgiveness. So I'm going to take this newly created false state, I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste it. And I'm gonna call this jump forgiveness coyote time. Just so that everyone knows what we're talking about. These are two common, commonly used terms in game development, uh, both, both pretty common. So the goal of jump forgiveness coyote time is to let the player, let's just say that this is a ledge right here. Let the player be able to walk and as they fall off the ledge, give them a split second to be able to jump again. By default, once you start falling you, and you didn't press jump, you will not jump. We can see that actually play testing. You can see that I, I walk off and try to jump and sometimes it just feels awful. You can tell when a game does not have jump forgiveness. I'm pretty sure it's a standard in platformers to have this. So let's start adding that. The first thing that we need is we still wanna be able to jump from walk, but we need a check that says, hey, we're leaving a tile. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take this link, which says we're touching a tile and I'm going to copy this and paste it to jump forgiveness and we can say the opposite by clicking on this button right here so now we're saying if we're not touching a tile so if we're not grounded on a tile is what I should have said then we're going to go to the jump forgiveness state and we do not want to take over motion on this one because we're going to be freshly going into this state. And now we have some options. We're gonna have a link that goes to fall, and this is gonna be our coyote time right here, is the link that will go to jump. 
the link condition that we're going to give uh, to be able to jump is we're going to give it an input of A being on press. And we don't need to necessarily give it acceptable frames. And this is the reason why is because first off, the previous state could also press A and go into jump. So both states can actually use jump. The next reason why is because the state going to fall again is going to be a wait. It's going to be an after certain amount of time passes. And so that is actually you're going to be your your acceptable frames technically. Now you could give it a one to two acceptable frame just for this condition as it runs into that. You could do that just for that chance it missed it during there. So I'll give it a two frame uh, acceptable frame weight and click OK. And then this link condition to fall is going to be an after certain amount of time passes. And I'm going to start by doing a 0.1 seconds, tenth of a second there. So when you walk off, you're going to be not grounded anymore. And then you're going to jump to a your only opportunity to jump again. And then if you press A again, which I should also make this top priority link, then you're going to perform a jump. If you do not press A within 0.1 of a second, then you're going to go to fall and you cannot jump again. Now, I have this link check only being ran in walk right now. It would be a good idea to also make waiting. So you could come here and create a shortcut. You could uh, move this right here. And you could also say copy this and put this right here. And real quick, if you are getting lost of where your shortcuts are, you can press this button down here and then it will highlight any of your actions. So this way you could quickly see where all your shortcuts are as well. But back on topic, the, the reason why you could add, add waiting because you're never going to walk off a cliff in the idle state, but you may have a platform or a mechanic that where the tiles disappear and then you start falling and you might want to give them a jump forgiveness for that situation. So I will bring this up here just because that's a pretty common thing too. And so this is it. Now we can play test and I'll put this up here and we'll run the F6 one again. And I'll move this down. And we can see that as we walk off, you'll see it go to here first and then make a decision of which one to do. So I walk off and you'll see that I didn't click it, so I fell. This time I'm gonna click it and then I jumped. And you can see I can walk. It feels really a, a lot better than when I couldn't even jump walking off before. I'm trying to see how far, I could get about two tiles. So if that is too far for you, all you would do is you would come into this link and you would adjust this wait time depending on what you want. I wouldn't go any lower than, than I don't know, 0.7 to me, anything lower than 0.7 felt really off still. So I just used 0.1 just to give uh, that forgiveness. And yeah, that is this video in a nutshell. We talked about input forgiveness. We talked about setting up combos with input forgiveness. We talked about jump forgiveness. And we talked about uh, how to implement this into your player project. If you got something out of this content, consider to subscribe to the channel. And with that, I'll see you at the next video.